Around 2012, Analytica Laboratories was set up as a commercial laboratory for agricultural, environmental and food chemistry testing. In the agricultural area, they've been undertaking a wide range of tests for the dairy industry and, over the past three years, increasing amounts of manuka honey. Terry Braggins explains. Manuka honey testing has become a major focus in New Zealand because of the high value of manuka honey overseas. You know, hundreds of dollars a kilogram. So there's definitely an interest in beekeepers wanting to know if their honey is manuka or not so they can sell it at a good price. There's been a lot of news in the media recently, particularly over in the UK, that perhaps there's more honey being sold as manuka than manuka produced in New Zealand. So there's a requirement to better understand if honey is being uh, fortified or with uh, some of its ingredients or perhaps there's some counterfeiting going on. So that's th therefore a requirement for testing. Well, there's two aspects to testing in a laboratory like us. One is that the people just want to know the quality of their product. So is it manuka or not? But then there are regulatory requirements and particularly for product that's being exported overseas. Analytica has been working for a few years now with the Unique Manuka Factor Honey Association or UMFHA to come up with new chemical markers that can help distinguish manuka from other floral types. So that one looks, that one's more manuka. Back in the days when manuka honey was known to have special properties and it was called UMF or Unique Manuka Factor, we used well diffusion assay to test for this property. So a large square plate was uh, set with agar which had a bacteria in it. Wells were cut out of the plate and a honey solution was poured into each well and this was incubated overnight. And then in the morning you'd look for what we called zones of clearing which are rings around particular wells and this would show you how potent that honey was. So the larger the zone of clearing around the well, the more potent the honey was because the bacteria couldn't grow that close to the honey. To be able to relate this to a UMF factor, standards were also put in the plate. So these were phenol standards and these would go to a particular size which would be your UMF 5, 10, 15, 20 and so depending on the calibration curve from those you could work back and find out what UMF rating each honey would have. We've got what we deem our three-in-one test, so this is dihydroxyacetone, methylglyoxal and hydroxymethylferferol or DHA, MG and HMF. DHA is found in the nectar of the manuka plant and when it goes from the nectar through to the hive it converts to methylglyoxal or MG. Both of these compounds are readily available. There have been cases where people have adulterated either DHA or MG into honey and it is difficult to detect. So we now have a test for leptospirin which is unique to the leptospermum family and so we can detect if this is in here we know it is of manuka origin. It's a very expensive chemical to buy and it's too hard to source so people can't adulterate their honey with it. Leptospirin is a large molecule, it's got sugar uh, groups attached and as it converts into the honey uh, leptospirin isn't lost and so it's a nice stable uh, chemical over time and even with heating so we know that it's not going to change um, between harvest and when a product is sold on the shelf. On a general day samples will come through on the courier and will be booked in at sample reception for whatever tests the beekeeper wants and then they'll track through into the lab with a unique laboratory number, they'll be weighed out and then dissolved in water for any particular test. So we may have C4 sugars, samples will also be extracted for the protein portion of the honey. We have our three-in-one testing, our colour testing, moisture or sugar testing. The work we do in the lab is quantitative, so we will detect the concentration of particular compounds in the honey and then depending on what the test is, for example for tootin, we will look at a range and if it's above a range then the sample will fail 
Um, if it's Manuka, we're looking at the MPA or the UMF value. Analytica Laboratories does testing for nectar as well as honey to look at the Manuka. So we'll often get samples coming in that are nectar, so they'll come in frozen, we'll defrost them, test that nectar portion, and we can look at the ratio between the sugar and the DHA present in that sample to tell whether it's a good Manuka plant or not. There's a lot of interest in finding the best regions for putting hives for Manuka. And so at the moment, you're relying on the box of honey coming off to see what the UMF is. But these days, people are starting to test the Manuka nectar and uh, we can tell which are good plants. So from there, they then start to get the seeds from these plants and can grow plantations. MPI have alluded to having a potential range of chemical markers that can be used to identify Manuka. At the moment, we're not sure about what levels or what compounds they will use, but they'll be used in the same way that leptospirin is used. They'll only be found in Manuka, and they'll be at a certain concentration to prove that this is a monofloral Manuka honey. At the moment, it is a little bit up in the air. There's uh, a lot of acronyms. We've got the DHA, the MG, HMF, UMF, MG, then we add leptospirin into the mix, and now possible handful of other chemicals. So it is quite a minefield to uh, embark on, especially when uh, things are changing quite rapidly at the moment. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.